Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, I'm once again taking a look at one of your designs that you recommended me on Mod.io. This thing sitting right behind me is very different compared to everything I've showcased in the past. This is a spawn pod that you could use as an alternative to the one in survival mode by simply removing the old one, spawning this in, and then starting your adventure with this. So this is called the Bulldog Spawn Pod, which is well ready to go in survival mode. And of course you don't have to use it at the start of survival mode, you could always use it later on. Use it to drop on an unknown planet as the first point of contact, so you can use this to get started before you build up your own big base and well just grind this down for resources. So it comes equipped with a survival kit, an O2 HU generator, a solar panel that you can see on top that's attached onto a custom weapon controller that makes it align itself automatically to the sunlight once we unlock it and well let it do its thing. It's got enough parachutes on the head to make sure it can land safely on the ground and it does have one atmospheric thruster so you can sort of fly this around, maneuver it to a more suitable location if you want to. So pressing F10 to find this in the spawn menu, the Bulldog spawn pod is 675 small blocks using pretty much all the DLC packs barring one or two. We've got no other information about it so we simply give this a thumbs up, move around towards the very front, have a quick look around the outside, have a quick tour of the interior, then we'll go and drop it down onto the ground and you'll be able to see how safe this thing is as it descends to the floor. So at the very front, this is what we get. So we've got a connector front and center to dock this thing up and load it up with any kind of resources we need. We can also see a bunch of conveyors that go all the way up to some parachute hatches, which is one of many on this ship. Then behind those conveyors, we see warfare batteries to give it a bit of power. We've also got a couple of interior lights then a bunch of magnetic plates underneath and you can just about make out the atmospheric thruster right there, which is our only thruster on this ship. Moving all the way across over to this section, this is our window to peer outside from our helm, which is our way to control this thing and of course to toggle all the stuff around the ship. We can fly the ship via that helm, but we'll see later on that it's quite awkward, but still manageable at the end of the day. Moving all around onto the side, this is all we can see. So there's our O2H2 generator at the top there. There's a little spotlight, we can see a camera at the very front. And at the main body, we've got some windows appear inside, and then a doorway that's set up on a sensor, so when we get up to it, it'll then open up automatically, close automatically, so we don't have to lift a finger. Moving all around towards the very back, we've got a ladder to go all the way up to the top of this thing, to do some repair work if it ever took damage in combat, and there is an air vent to suck an oxygen from the surrounding areas, just to refill your tanks. Over to the opposite side, here is our atmospheric thruster, and it's been covered up by a couple of beam blocks for some decoration. There's a little light, there's a couple of magnetic plates to clamp yourself down on. Moving all the way up and looking down, here is our solar panel on a hinge on a rotor, and it will rotate all the way around as we turn the sun around, but for the moment it's been clamped down, just to make the exterior look a bit easier. But yes, behind the solar panel there is a couple of gyroscopes, and there is another parachute hatch, but looking down we see another parachute hatch right above our O2H2 generator, there's our spotlight, there's our camera at the front, there's a little window peering down that little interior. Moving all the way down and underneath this thing, past all the grass, that's all we can see. So we've got four magnetic the place, there's the bottom of our atmospheric thruster, and there's the back of the connector. And there we go, that's a brief look around the outside of the Bulldog spawn pod. That looks bloody fantastic with how it's all been set up. It's going to get even better when we actually showcase the solar panel, which I'll do in just a moment. Grab hold my character, we walk all the way up to the doorway, because it's now going to automatically open up. Moving away, moving forwards. It's just a nice thing to have. Moving all the way up, crouching so we get a better look, this is what we get on the inside. So looking towards the back, we've got a cryopod. Right above in the ceiling is our O2H2 generator. They've got an access panel right there for some decoration. And then we've got a bunch of event controllers for a time block right at the bottom. Over to this section, there is your survival kit. Over to here is a hydrant tank. Right above there is our custom weapon controller for our solar panel. And towards the front, there's a ejector connector, there's your weapon locker, and there's a small car container for you to store a few bits and bobs inside. Right above there is your programmable block where we go and access this, down and edit it, but when we see we've got nothing on here, we can customise it if we want to. Anyway, coming out of that, looking back towards the front, standing up slightly, we can see an air vent right there behind the barred window block. Right at the very front, that's our window to appear outside, it also hop into the helm, that is the view we get. And you can just about make out the warfare battery on the side there, which we saw at the very front. But looking on the side, it's a nice view all the way up there. And now we can come to the third person view, bring the free camera over, so now we'll actually demonstrate the solar panel. So bring up the HUD, and sitting it like this, pressing number two, that'll now unlock it. And as you can see, it just lifts up slightly, so that is the maximum amount of solar power you can get. 
at its current time of day. It was to fiddle around with the sunlight, so he put it over to there. After a short delay, now moves down. Over to that section, we see it lifting all the way up. And then we go all the way to the opposite side. Now over to here. Back it goes. We'll move it over to this section, slightly down. And it's not going to spin all the way around like it did in my little test run I did before the video. Yes, I'm going to move that over to there. And now it's going to spin around. There we go, I just spoke about it. And now it's going to try and find as much sunlight as possible. And that's about as good as it's going to get. But for now, I'll go put it back to how it was. And now just sit down and maximize the batteries. As for the rest of the controls back in the third person view, number one front magnetic plates, which for the magnetic plate sitting on the solar panel, to lock it in place to stop it from wobbling around as you drop down towards the ground. Number two is to turn on and off the custom weapon controller for the solar panel. So now we can manually control it if you want to with three, four, five, and six. Number seven is through your atmospheric thruster and it will turn off by default when you're a certain distance from the ground and you'll just basically fall to the ground to the parachute's deploy. Number 8 is for your spotlight at the front there, we can just about make it out turning on and off as I click it. Then number 9 for your magnetic plates underneath to lock and unlock it, to firmly clamp yourself onto the ground. Over to tab number 2, these are your batteries to auto recharge. But you won't have to turn these to recharge because we'll do it automatically as we come down to the ground. But you will need to switch it back to auto if you want to take off, fly around by the atmospheric thruster. But as for that, there's the controls. Now all we've got to do is come back into first person view, back into third, reline the camera, press number 7, undo the magnetic plates, and we'll take this off and we'll eventually rely on ourselves ready to drop ourselves down to the ground and you'll see how it falls gracefully without damaging anything. But yes, as for flying it, you will need to be creative and tilt it around to actually make it go where you want it to go. So as you can see, we're now flying around and I think I'll go take us over to the ice patch right next to us. And whoa, like I said, you've got to be creative, very careful because you can easily damage the vehicle if you're being reckless. So looking down, that should do quite nicely. Tilting it all the way forwards, letting go of spacebar. Then as you can see, we now get an alarm sound. There's the red light at the back. And eventually, as we get close to the ground, parachutes will deploy. And we'll safely clamp ourselves down and be ready to go off on our adventure. So here we go. All the way down. There goes the parachutes. You can see the solar panel now wobbling around as it tries to find the maximum amount of sunlight. And we'll very, very slowly come all the way down to the ground. And I think that'll be that for this video. But yes, it's a lovely little spawn pod to use in your world. And a great alternative to the one that you use in survival mode. And this one should last you a nice long time before you get nice and built up with your own giant base or giant ship to go exploring in. Like I said, it's great for using on unknown planets, drop it down to the ground, use it as a temporary base of operations before you go off and do your own thing. So there'll be a link to the description below if you do wish to download and play around yourself. Highly recommend you do. I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.